when you attend lectures, there's a circular that goes around for people to write their name. I'm also going to talk about one funny thing that I didn't know. I had no idea. In the courses come with their code. I had no idea. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in. If you're new here, welcome. If you have been with me on this one, thank you so much. I do appreciate you. My name is Bertha and I feel our faith, relationship, personal development, a lifestyle, and other good things, awesome things you can think about. Quickly, in today's video, I'm going to talk about first day of lectures tips. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing and be sure to turn on the notification bell so that anytime I upload videos, you get notified. Let's get down to today's video. When you attend lectures, there's a circular that goes around for people to write their name, their ID, and their telephone number. So, if you miss lectures, it's going to go against you. So, try as much as possible not to miss lectures. Lecturers give attendance marks. So, part of your assessment can take attendance can take 10 percent or 10 marks for your attendance if you are missing lectures or if you miss lectures in a long period of time it's going to affect you you are going to miss a whole 10 marks <laughs> you can't afford to miss this hooping 10 marks please please attend lectures it's going to help you especially as a fresher it's going to help you a lot don't be those students who never stay in class they go about doing their duties. Meanwhile, the main reason why they are in the school, they are not fulfilling that part. They are not doing that part. No, be punctual during lectures. It helps you. You don't understand anything. You ask questions. You liaise with your friends. I mean, you get a lot of benefits from going to lectures. So please, do not skip lectures. And even as regular students, you people are even lucky because you may have some days off in the week. Maybe you can have two days, no lectures. So don't worry, if you have lectures back to back, be sure to attend. Then in your two days, or some people even have three days off during the week, you can have that time to rest and to do other things you want to do. The second thing you also to note is timetable. The timetable, there's something that happened that I didn't know. So our timetable came out. And if you don't know, I'm a discount student, therefore, my campus is at city campus so our timetable came out and i'm not seeing any date telling which day we have lectures and the rest so i asked a very funny question in the in the group chat with our group chats that uh the timetable is from when to when i can't see any date i cannot comprehend what is there and they told me that that timetable is for that week we do it on weekend so it's for that weekend that two days i'm like what I had no idea. I was thinking it is the same junior high school format that is used. So the timetable that comes out is for that week. So please don't miss your way around it. <laughs> I didn't know, so I'm mentioning it here. Bear in mind, I said the timetable that comes out for that particular week is only for that week. After that, it is done and it's done with. It is not used again. Yeah, so that's how it works in the university. The third thing I would say is about get hold of the academic calendar of the year it is very crucial and important in that calendar you know when ias will be conducted you know when quizzes well quizzes are usually determined by the lecturers you know when matriculation which i'm going to talk about you know when important dates will be highlighted on the calendar so it's very important for you to get hold of it to know how uh, the the semester is going to be it is very crucial and very important so please get hold of it you may be even fortunate to get hold of it before lecture starts for you i'm also going to talk about one funny thing that i didn't know i had no idea <laughs> so in the university the courses come with their code i had no idea so i'll be hearing info 221 social 223 and i'm like what's really going on here so I got to find out that every course has a code, a code reference to it. So this is how the code works. Now when you're in level 100, all your course code will start with 1. When you progress to level 200, 
your course code will start with two and then level 300 it will start with three level 400 four so for instance in level 100 i did info so we have info 122 two, introduction to information then in level 200 it became info 224 i think <laughs> The course code are a bit confusing, so if you don't take it, if you don't master it, you will get confused. And then in level 300, I did, uh, inf I mean, I'm about to enter into level 300. Yeah, so note that in your class, you'll be hearing course codes attached to your courses. So don't get confused. I think I've explained it enough. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it in the comment section and then I'll address it. If you are also not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and get notified once I upload a video. To the next point. The next point is course and center registration. Now, usually, most of us do course registration. With the course registration, we already know that we have to pay 50% of your fee before you are allowed access to register for your course. Or you get access to register for your course. Now, there is a deadline for course registration and center registration as well they have deadlines if the date passes it means that you have to defer that course because you didn't register your course once we do course registration usually you forget to do center registration center registration is very important it tells you where you want to take your exams it is important so usually when you register for your course and then you are going back to register for your center registration they write it boldly that in fact, even in the process of registry for the course registration, they write boldly that course registration is not center registration. So please do take note of this. And the last one I want to talk about is matriculation. Matriculation is supposed to be done before lectures start. But because of some reasons, lectures start before matriculation takes place. Now what is matriculation? Matriculation is just a formal way to properly or formally introduce you into the university. And then it is done in a ceremony form where you get to know the authorities of the school the vice chancellor pro vice chancellor and the rest then where you also get to know a, a little of a history about the school you know the rules about the school you know the motto of the school you know the aim the vision and everything finally you are sworn in as a student to abide by all the rules and regulations of the school so please do take note of this usually when it's time for matriculations people dress and take pictures and the rest for me i never had a matriculation because covid was very intense as at the time but people do people manage to take pictures here and there but i just took it as one of those things there was no picture for me to show anyway for my matriculation yeah so that's it guys if you have any questions comments please do leave them in the comment section for me and i'll get back to you Thank you once again for tuning in and see you in my next video. Bye.